गुरुर् ब्रह्मा गुरुर् विष्णु गुरुर् देवो महेश्वरा गुरु साक्षात पर ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरुवे नम तस्व श्री गुरुवे नम गुड मॉर्निंग गुड आफ्टरनून गुड इवनिंग इन विच आर पार्ट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड दैट यू आर एंड वेलकम टू लर्न माइंड्स वे लर्निंग इज फॉर ऑल एंड ऑल दैट वी डू इज फॉर लर्निंग ऑन द ओकेजन ऑफ गुरु पौर्णिमा आई विश ऑल आर व्यूअर्स अ वेरी हैप्पी गुरु पौर्णिमा and of course i pay tribute i pay my humble respect to my parents who are my first gurus uh, my teachers and everyone who has been a part of me of my life and has been a guru to me in some way or the other so with this let's begin the episode newspaper there was an advertisement from an organization i decided to apply for that organization like i said in one of our initial videos in fact the first video of learn minds i uh, said that i am a ee civil graduate i am a civil engineer by graduation and an mba finance by post graduation so it was a completely different field and it was for the first time that i got introduced to the beautiful world of training and development I would really uh, not call myself a guru because the word guru uh, has got a beautiful meaning. The first two letters of that word uh, is G U, which means darkness, and the next two letters, that is R and U, uh, is someone who dispels that darkness or someone who shows you light through that darkness. That is the meaning of the word guru. So I don't know if I have been a guru to someone, or I don't know if I really uh, have really achieved that much to call myself a guru. And I say this with all humility. but nonetheless after joining that organization and after leaving my civil engineering field i got an opportunity to work with uh, the beautiful field of learning and development and training when i was uh, looking back i uh, realized uh, that why did i decide to become a teacher or a trainer and of course there were reasons behind it but mostly in this episode i would like to tell you uh, from my experience of almost uh, 16 plus years in training Uh, and development and overall experience of 20 plus years in a uh, technical field i would like to talk about what are the do's and don'ts as a trainer as a facilitator and i thought what uh, would what can be a better day than today because uh, this episode is uh, on the occasion of guru purnima so when i joined uh, this uh, training organization i eventually started climbing up the ladder then i uh, worked with the training department of a multinational organization and then finally another one and then finally i decided to start on my own and uh, i formed up my own training company called nalanda business associates so that's how the journey has been it has been a beautiful journey like i said why did i thought of becoming a trainer so there were two people who in fact three people who were instrumental in uh, me deciding to become a teacher or a trainer so right from my school day today i would like uh, to thank uh, uh, mrs shridevi teacher who was our maths teacher in my 7th standard Uh, so ma'am if you are watching this video thank you so much for being there in my life the other person was my maths uh, teacher my engineering maths uh, teacher his name was his name is sunil uh, kate and uh, what a teacher and then of course uh, another gentleman whom i met in my engineering college his name is professor v r farke he is a he is a young man of 79 years uh, today and i think almost 79 years in fact uh, i i don't know his exact age because i feel he is always young at heart I learned a lot of things from uh, these three teachers. What were those things which I learned from them? One was that passion, that joy of teaching. I could I could see that. Second was imparting values, not by preaching, but by example. So they would impart values. They would talk about life lessons, but that was just by uh, giving some examples and all of that. And the third was uh, their subject matter expertise. They were so good with their subjects, with their courses, or courses is uh, the trendy word. So. i would like uh, to uh, thank all three of them for being there in my life as a part of my corporate career i would like to say that uh, the organization which i joined was dale carnegie training uh, india of course the india branch and uh, in in mumbai and uh, of course uh, i'm indebted to the spirit of dale carnegie if i'm doing some job or if i stand here in front of you and all of you and uh, you know i'm presenting all these videos i think 
I've learned the art of public speaking over the years and I'm, I'm still not a master in that. I'm learning it day in and day out. Um, so it is because of my tenure at Dale Carnegie Training, which helped me improve a lot. There were some wonderful people whom I came across. I would first like to thank a big, big, big thank you uh, to Pallavi Jha, Mrs. Pallavi Jha and Mr. Sanjay Jha, who were who are uh, today, even today, they are the directors of Dale Carnegie Training. So it's because of them, uh, they decided to give me this opportunity and here I am as a trainer today. And of course, uh, there I met a wonderful uh, gentleman, two gentlemen in fact, one of them was uh, Kedar Vashi. So Kedar Bhai, if you're watching this video, uh, thank you so much for being there. And yes, of course, one of the, one of, uh, the very popular trainers in the country, uh, who's a motivational speaker now, Mr. Suresh Srinivasan. So all these four people, I think I owe it to them and yes, our CEO, Mr. Raj Bhavan. So I owe it to Mr. Raj Bhavan and all these wonderful four people for grooming me because I was from an engineering field. What did I found in these people was I think uh, they had this innate trait of uh, inspiring and motivating, constant motivation. They would keep on motivating. Extreme discipline. I learned discipline, the value of discipline, which is extremely important as a trainer. So I learned the value of discipline from these people and I learned the importance of time and even today I'm still learning. These were all the people who have been instrumental in me becoming a trainer or they have taught a lot to me. They have, I, or rather, let me put it this way, I have learned a lot from them. Finally, if I have to talk about the do's and don'ts of uh, being a trainer, being a facilitator, being a coach, honestly there is a difference between these three. We'll talk about it uh, in one of the later episodes at Learner Minds but right here, right now, let me just uh, talk about uh, what are the do's when it comes to training. The first do is passion. If you are passionate about learning, then I think it is a it is a must. If you want to become a trainer, you constantly need to upgrade yourself. It's like a mobile phone. The way you upgrade the mobile phone every day, or you know, time and again you get those notifications that upgrade the phone, upgrade the phone. That's the same thing which you need to do in training. Number two. Um, <coughs> I would say you have to be a people's person. You should be a people's person if you want to become a trainer. Because ultimately, uh, whether it is online, whether it is offline, I know because of the pandemic, online training has also become, uh, you know, it has become, it is in fashion. So I think uh, you need to uh, be able to connect with people. That I would say is the biggest do. That is what you need to do. And third is, I believe there are many of them, but. I'm just going to keep it simple by just sharing three do's and three don'ts. Is uh, unlearning, the process of unlearning. I'll tell you why it is very important. It is important because of the fact that I came from a hardcore corporate training background. Where you know, everything was there. There was a proper room, uh, there was a proper setup, projector, this, that, and everything that we needed for a corporate training setup. Now cut to, when I started on my own, when I started this, uh, my own company called Nalanda Business Associates and I started working with a leading media group and I had to deliver my first training in Marathi and that was in a village where the arrangements or the logistics were very humble. There was no mic, there was no proper setup, there was a dari or a, you know what we call in Marathi as a satranji and on that the people were sitting and I had to tune myself to that. I had to unlearn some of the things which I used to do in my regular corporate sessions. So number one, unlearning. Uh, number two, I would say that uh, as a, a trainer, as a facilitator, as a coach, as a teacher, whichever way you look at it, you need to uh, be, like I said earlier, extremely disciplined. I think discipline is the key. If your session is supposed to start at 9.30, a good training practice would be, please be present at 9 o'clock. And number three, uh, you need to uh, understand the difference between being a friend and being a teacher, trainer, facilitator, coach. You have to cut that fine line. That has to be that fine line. You can be friendly with your trainees, coaches, your students, but be friendly with them as far as possible. I would say that don't at least, at least during the classroom sessions or otherwise, don't be friends with them. Be friendly with them is what I would say because that has its own, uh, you know, that has its own implications or that has its own effects. So that's. Um, that's all I would like to say. I know there are uh, some wonderful people who are brilliant uh, trainers and I'm sure they would want to add a lot of things and please feel free to add them in the comment box. Uh, we'll be more than happy uh, to learn about them uh, because we just wanted to keep it very simple and once again wishing everyone 
on the occasion of uh, Guru Purnima. Once again, I thank all those people from my erstwhile organizations because of whom I have become a trainer and all my mentors and of course uh, all those people who touched me in my lives and yes of course my parents. So thank you so much. Uh, see you next week with yet another video. Please like and share this video as much as you can and please subscribe Learn Minds. Thank you. Hello all viewers of Learn Minds. This is Samir Alone from Infini Institute, Pune. On the occasion of Guru Purnima, let me pass on my best wishes and greetings to everybody. Let me share my experience of last 23 years with this academics. When we talk about Guru Purnima and the relationship between a student and a teacher, a teacher should have love for his profession, whether you are into teaching or into some, any other industry. First thing is you should love. Once you love that profession, then definitely all the challenges or uh, some kind of say constraints you overlook and you focus on the main objective of this teaching where you would like to pass on your experience, maturity to the student. The second important thing is from the student's perspective, if you would like to develop him, then you cannot give him excuse. When we take a new car, for example, we do not expect a new car with defects. If you apply this thing to your student, then why industry shall accept your student who is having uh, some defects or who is not well prepared for a particular job to handle the responsibility. So second point is do not entertain excuses of your students when it comes to the best product. And the third and most important thing which I would like to share is you should have that trust between the relationship between a teacher and a student. Because if that trust is there, then definitely you can expect the best result from yourself and from your student. With this note, I would like to again pass on the wishes to the Learnamite viewers. Happy Guru Purnima. Good morning, Learnamite viewers. Good morning to you all. On the occasion of Guru Purnima, I'll tell you a very small and sweet story. Now see here. Right from today, if you count, then 21,000 years ago, Ved came into existence and the money came into existence 2,000 years ago. So, my question is, what was the motivation which kept our Vedas alive? Simple thing. Now, let me tell you the story behind this. <clears throat> because I know that uh, you don't know the answer of this. Simple thing that when Brahmarshi insisted Rushi Vyas and Rushi Patanjali, Brahmarshi was knowing one thing in his mind that for the human beings to live better life, only two things are necessary. First thing is good health and second thing is good brain. So he made two departments. One department is allotted to Mr. Uh, Rushi Patanjali and one department was allotted to Rushi Vyas. And they were instructed to develop the science which can develop brain and which can develop health. So they worked on it and that's why Patanjali wrote Patanjali Yoga Sutra and Rushi Vyas and his team, they wrote four Vedas. And that was the first book in the market. So, the learning process started 19,000 years ago before AD. So, from today, 21,000 years ago. Now, what happened? Purely 19,000 years we were studying with one motivation that I have to develop my brain and I have to develop my health. Simple thinking that if my brain is good and if, I, if my health is good, I can win the world. But as of now, as on today, if we compare, what happens? Everybody thinks that I want to learn because I want to earn money. Now, can you tell me, the, suppose you are having 1,000 crores in your bank account, 
can you give me in writing that uh, you are not going to study or your uh, son is not going to study or your grandson is not going to study because you are having money but if i ask you one question that why you are studying the everybody will tell me that i am studying for getting good money nobody insist on this particular thing that i am going to study for the development of my brain and if i am having good brain and if i am having good health then let the company or let the others notice that this is the good man and he will get good salary so with this particular story <clears throat> i wish you all a very good and very nice guru purnima and thank you girish <coughs> for this